First thing we're going to do is insert into this lovely new MGB hub made by a company called Orson Equipment. I've remembered who they are now. Uh, very helpful. Uh, it's made in England as well, which is a nice thing to see. This is uh, a brand new machined part. Um, we're going to insert these bearing races into here. So this is just a, an, an angled insert that you push into the hub. I'm going to push this one in. I'm going to drift it in with another one of the same type that I just happen to have spare. Because I didn't need to do this on the other side of the car. going in evenly, not quite. It's going in. Oh, everything's starting to fly around in the workshop now. Not far off. You get the idea. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little way to go. I've got to close up that gap under there. I'm going to drift it down. I'm going to do the same with the other one, uh, which is going to go in this end. You may be able to see down there. Uh, down that hole, we're going to put the other bearing race, which is this small size. That happens to be... So it's going to go beveled side out this time, because the bearing's got to drop down. So the larger bearing goes in from this side, the smaller bearing goes in from this side. Uh, and that's going to drop down there with the bevel facing outwards. And then we're going to drive it home using, using this socket, which just happens to be the right size. Um, so uh, I won't bore you with that. We'll come back once I've done this. What we're going to do now is pack this bearing race with grease. Um, and there's quite a good technique for doing this that I got off the internet. Here's my high performance bearing grease. Um, it's quite difficult. What you want to do is make sure grease gets all the way through. You want to push it in from one side only, in between all of these rollers, so that it starts oozing out of the other side. And that's quite tricky. I've tried various methods, and uh, the best one is getting a big lump of grease and smearing it a big lump of grease on your hand and smearing it with the uh, with the bearing race like that until you see stuff oozing out of the top. You don't want to try and pack it in from both sides because what you might end up doing is leaving a void in the middle where you put a bit of grease in this edge here and it looks like it's full but it's not uh, and then you've got dry bearings in the middle. So, um, so that's what we're going to do now just quickly. This is a messy job and there's no getting away from it unfortunately. You just gotta have a big roll of blue blue roll to hand. Just keep nibbling off bits of stuff and you can see just there the grease is coming through. So it will have filled up the entire of that channel. What you don't want to do is get a lot of grease on this surface here, because that's the surface that's gonna be against this this uh, spacer. And the grease all takes up space so if you want to be measurement, if you want your accurate measurements you don't really want loads of grease on this. This doesn't need to be lubricated at all um, so, uh, so that's what we're going to do there. So we'll fill up that side until all the way around we've got grease poking out the top and then we'll fill up this side and then wipe off that edge with a bit of blue roll. The other thing we're going to fill up is probably the back of this so that we've got a reservoir of grease in our oil seal, like so, and then we're just going to lubricate the edge of this oil seal so that it doesn't run dry when the wheels first start turning. Um, 
so that's that. And then, once we're done with that, we'll push the whole lot into the back of the hub. So there we have it. Here's our bearing packed with grease. It's oozing out of the rollers. There's not too much on the face there. Nothing much on the inside surface there either. So we don't really want anything, any grease build up on there. Uh, so that's that done. Inside the inner lip of the oil seal, we've packed that with grease as well. Trying to keep it as dry as we can on the outside. It doesn't need to be lubricated. Um, so what we're going to do is put all this together now. First thing we need to do is drop the spacer down into the middle. Put this in the middle of the camera. Bearing race, check that's nice and clean. Drop that in there. There we go. And here's our, uh, well we could probably put a bit more grease into there, into that edge. Just to act as a bit of a reservoir really. So that this bearing never runs dry. I mean, if you uh, look at uh, John Twist's videos from University Motors, you'll see that uh, he says the inner bearing never runs dry. It's always the outer bearing that needs regreasing. So I'll take him at his word for that because I don't know any better. And he is the expert. Um, so there we go. Clean up this inside edge again. Get through a lot of blue paper in this job. Try and keep this. And half the reason is I don't want to get greasy fingerprints everywhere. Okay. I'm going to put this with the, so that's the packed side with the spring in it. We're going to put the flat side facing up, the packed side facing down. And press that, press that in a little bit. Use a block of wood. Bash it home. There we go. A bit more cleaning up. Is now properly in there. Okay, good. So that lock can now be slid onto this shaft. We need to put, don't forget, the collar on first. The collar is going to end up in there like that. Uh, if you prefer, you can put the collar in there first. That seems to work just as well. There we go. There is a spinning. Uh, front hub. Next thing to do is drop the drop the shim in. So I've got a five thou shim. I think that's not going to be enough. There we go. There's the third one on there. I'm just going to push that down with a... Oh, in fact, they're all sitting right down. They're all right down there on the top surface of that, um, of that spacer. So this one is going to go in dry now. This is the top bearing. That's going to drop down there into the hole, hopefully. Go. That can sit down there. This tab washer needs to drop down into the hole. There we go, like that. 
And there's our castle nut, which I've just made a pig's ear of putting on. There's a castle nut. Spin that on there like that. Next thing to do, uh, what we're yeah. going to do is put these ears into the vise, tighten it up to 60 foot pounds, and check the play, the end play or the end float, um, and see if it's within spec, which it almost certainly won't be at this stage, but it's a trial and error thing. So the next stage, now we've assembled this and it spins nicely on its uh, on the stub axle, you can hopefully see the uh, the uh, castle nut down there in the hole. Um, we need to tighten this up uh, and see either it's going to be too loose and there's going to be play left and right, like that. I can feel a little bit there already. That's because it's not tightened up. Or it's going to be so tight that the bearings bind and I can't turn this very easily. So we need a smooth turning axle. So to do that, we're going to pop this in the vise, hold it with the ears where they break calipoid mount and that gives us a solid working position to start from. Then you're going to need, uh, what is this, a one and one eighth socket um, and we need to torque this up to um, a range, there's a range given in the workshop manual between 40 and 70 um, pounds but the, the reason they give that range is because what you need to do is get the the slot of the castle nut in alignment with this hole here so that you can put your split pin through. So uh, anything between 40 and 70 is fine. I've got this set to 50 at the moment. Oh, need to get a bit tighter in the vise. already I can barely move that I realized at the end of the day the other day when I was doing this I, I was making a mistake the correct procedure really when you're doing this is to sh over shim the hub so that there is play backwards and forwards and as you can see from the dial gauge here I haven't got enough shims because there is no play at all on the dial gauge it's just not moving at all at any significant amount not even one thou so I haven't got enough shims in order to space it out so far that there's a problem and then so the technique is over shim it so there's play and then reduce it so that there is two to four thousandths of play and no more. Um, if you've got no play whatsoever, what that means is there's pressure on the bearings and that's going to cause the bearings to wear out soon. Um, so if I just take this dial gauge off, it's quite tricky to get the dial gauge adjusted on the back of that. If you had one with a longer one, you'd be able to stick it on here and stick the, the, uh, the nose down the middle onto the center of that. Uh, but as you can see, this this spins. This is at 55 pound feet, but it's not exactly spinning freely, I don't think. So, uh, so here's what we need to do. Here's a here's a little drawing. I don't know how easy to read that is. Um, here's the the uh, crosshatch sections. Here are those things that I drove in um, into the new hub, and basically what I realised was I haven't. I hadn't driven this one in quite far enough so I took it all apart again and I put a flat punch uh, a flat ended punch down there and just tapped this bearing in all the way home so now uh, I think there's about 60 thou of shims in there as opposed to 110 that there was the other day um, so so those two surfaces are uh, are closer together. That means the number of shims I need to put between the end of this spacer here and the bearing, the back of the front bearing, uh, is is less. But unfortunately, I realised this this play situation is just there's no play, and therefore the bearings are slightly binding. So that's not acceptable. So what we're going to do is take it all apart and do it again. 
The thing I've done to make this easier uh, this time around is I've taken the oil seal out of the back of this because it doesn't have any, doesn't take up any space in terms of the the assembly. Um, and uh, what it does do is it makes life a lot easier when you come to assembling and disassembling it lots of times because you can just add the shims straight onto the axle as opposed to trying to fiddle them down the centre of the hub. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Take the nut off, pull this all off, drop out the outer race, outer bearing and the tab washer. And what we're left with, because we haven't got the this um, seal on here pulling the rest of this stuff out, is we're left with the spacer and the inner race still on there. So, uh, so that's quite handy. So let's take all these off and measure these. Uh, so look, zero that just in case. So we got 47 thousandths of an inch there. That's slightly less than I remember from the other day. So let's over shim that. We'll put a 10 thou on there. We'll measure that. 57, 58 and a half. Fifty-eight and a half, fifty-nine and a half, depending on how you measure it. There's a little bit of variation there. Put these back on the end of the axle shaft. <coughs> Put the hub back on. Put the bearing race back in. Tab washer. Nut. As you can see, after you've done this a few times, it gets a lot easier. And torque it up. So we had just a little bit of stickiness before. That's torque to 50. Oh, there's a lot of nice free running. But I can tell straight away, you may be able to hear this. I can tell straight away there's play there. Let's put the dial indicator back on here and see if we can get that stuck on there. The problem with this is what you really want is a dial indicator that has a very long probe that can go, you can put the base of it on here and the probe down in the middle because that doesn't turn. When I turn this, you can see, depending on where there's some sort of run out in the axis of this, I can see the indicator going up and down here. So uh, I need to just, I haven't got a good enough, a long enough dial indicator. I need to just leave it, I want to position it near that hole there. If I just press that that way, I'm going down to, what's that? That's about 23 and up to 35. So that's too much play. So we'll take this all apart again. Pop that on the end there. Um, and we'll do it again and that's the nature of this sort of thing just keep doing it until it's right so we're going to pull this apart how easy that is. We're going to take off this outer one which is our 10 thou. Just check that really was the one. Yes it was. We're going to drop that down to five. So the thing we've done there, the crucial thing to remember is you must over shim it so you get play and then you reduce the number of shims or the, or the thickness of the shimmed space until you have an acceptable amount of play which is two according to the workshop manual actually it's two to four thousandths so let's see what our stack of shims here is currently reading 54 and a half and we were about 60 before so we're taking off uh, 
about five. Uh, 59 and a half, wasn't it, before? Taking off about five thousand there. So pop all that back on there. Hub back on. Bearing in the position. Hair washer. Where's that nut? There's the nut. It's slightly nutty myself after doing this so many times. Okay, tighten it up and torque it. So that's still spinning nice and freely. Let's just check. There is. I bet that probably isn't detectable by the camera. There is a barely detectable movement. Some of the movement is playing the vice. Um, let's pop this back on here, like this. I'll line that up with that hole there. Uh, let's see, what are we reading? We're reading, what's that, about 32. We can get it back down to 31. We can get up to, 33 or 34 so that in my opinion is correctly shimmed so all we need to do now is take it apart repack this with grease pack the outer bearing with grease uh, put it all back together and wherever it is we'll put that grease cap on over so that we so we need to put the uh, split pin through this hole so it goes uh, in through the uh, through the uh, castle nut, and uh, and then put the uh, the grease cap over the top, and then we're ready to go.